Hello, crime fighters. This is Straight Talk, and I am Ray the D.A. Well, here we are, part two, the cost of crime to victims. Crimes, both violent and nonviolent, impose many different kinds of losses on both victims and our taxpayers. The two-year study conducted by Dr. Ted Miller, Dr. Mark Cohen, and Brian Wersema, the results of which are reported in their Victim Costs and Consequences, A New Look, estimated the realistic costs of crime which are suffered by the victims of these crimes. So what did they consider in reaching their conclusion? Well, in their study they reviewed tangible losses like property damage and property loss, the value of property damaged and taken and not recovered. They considered medical care, which includes hospital and physician care, as well as medical transport, rehabilitation, prescriptions, etc. They also considered mental health care, which includes payment for services to crime victims by psychiatrists and psychologists, social workers. They also considered police and fire service, which includes the initial police response and the follow-up. Also, the loss of productivity from, as the result of a crime. That includes wages, fringe benefits, school days, work days lost by the victims and their families, and they also considered the funeral expenses that victims' families are required to pay. Now, <clears throat> they also considered things called intangible losses. Now, what are intangible losses? Uh, they're not like the tangible losses, such as medical costs or lost wages. Intangible losses are things such as pain and suffering or the loss of the quality of life that don't really have a market price. Nevertheless, these losses are real, and victims would pay dearly to avoid losing them. No real determination of the real costs of crime to victims could possibly be accurate without including the intangible losses. This study estimated the value of pain suffering, fear, and the loss of quality of life by analy analyzing jury awards to crime victims as a result of lawsuits filed by victims against their offenders. As a result of their two-year study, the authors concluded the estimate, estimated costs for most of what we call Part 1 crimes as are reported annually by the FBI. And those are as follows. So what are the costs of Part 1 crimes in Kentucky? The cost they estimated of a murder of all of the losses, tangible and intangible, for murder was $2,940,000. The cost of a rape, both tangible and Intangible losses was about $87,000 for the victim. A robbery, about $8,000. What about an assault where people are injured? $24,000 considering all of the losses. Burglary, $1,400. Larceny, theft, about $370. What about auto theft? $3,700 and arson about $50,500. This study was published in 1996 when the value of the 1996 dollar is adjusted for inflation the cost to the victims are actually much higher in 2012 and 2013. Of course, this list does not include the thousands and thousands of Part 1 crimes which occur every year in America. 
nor does it include the estimated two-thirds, two-thirds of crime that goes unreported by victims in the United States every year. Okay, crime fighters, this is how, this is the formula by which we will now be able to determine the cost of crime to the victims in Kentucky in 2012 and 2013. Stay tuned for parts three and four of our report on the costs of crime to victims. I'm Ray the DA and this is Straight Talk.